Hi everyone and welcome to Ball Python Breeder UK. In today's video we're going to talk about ball python cohabitation um, because a question I get a lot is can ball pythons live together? Now disappointingly the answer to that question is no. So <laughs> we're going to go over the risks involved if you do choose to try to put your ball pythons in the same enclosure. Now obviously these risks, some of them are risks that you will run if you're breeding them but this video is more aimed at people who want to keep them as pets and if you're having them as long-term pets and you want to keep them as healthy and happy as possible. Um, obviously with breeding the risks are usually outweighed by the rewards because you know if you generate vet bills uh, you're also generating profit from the babies and you can pay for them. So let's just go through the I guess the seven main reasons why it's not a good idea to keep ball pythons together. And well, first and foremost, uh, I guess I'd say fighting for dominance. Uh, and that is why I've got this female out to help me with that point. Um, she is a hurricane yellow belly head for albino, I think. Uh, I have to check my records. But she looks and acts completely harmless. And for the most part she is. And if you put her with another female, or if I put a female in her enclosure, she won't do anything. She won't show you any signs of aggression. She won't react. She'll just sit there. They'll look like they're hanging out. And you'll probably think, you know, for a month or two, or however long it takes them, you'd probably think they were okay. And the reason for that is that what I call fighting for dominance isn't really fighting like we think of because uh, reptiles, they don't really fight as badly as mammals do. They're, most of them aren't stupid enough to kill each other. Um, whereas obviously two male humans will, if given the chance. Um, but by fighting for dominance, I mean that one female, usually the heavier one, just ends up squashing the lighter female or the less aggressive female out of the favorite positions for warmth or for hiding or for whatever, the fatter, heavier female is gonna take over. And what that usually results in is the less dominant female not being able to uh, thermoregulate as she'd like. And this eventually leads to her becoming stressed. And like I said, it's not obvious and it's, it's kind of a, a hard one to get your head around and it might take months to, to come out, but it, it will happen sooner or later. And I've seen, I've seen it when people have tried to put them together, you know, one female squashing into a hide and pushing until the other one evacuates, basically, and gets out of there. It's not an aggressive way of doing things, it's not biting, but it is fighting for dominance. And that brings us to our next point, which is stress and anorexia. Like I've said, that results in stress. And ball pythons, even though they don't really act stressed, they are extremely prone to stress. Um, and they, they always go down the same road when they get stressed. They stop eating. Um, sometimes they stop eating outright. Other times they don't stop eating right away. They'll start regurgitating. Uh, over a period of months, they'll regurgitate once a month or so. Um, uh, I've received animals in that condition before, got them a nice setup with nice hiding places on their own and they've, you know, turned into great feeders. But anorexia is the result of stress and stress is often a result of cohabitation. And the reason for that, I guess, is that in the wild they are solitary creatures. They meet up to breed, but they're also a species that stores sperm when they breed and the females will store the f sperm from several males and this kind of gives them this this mindset where they want to monopolize the supply of males um, but they also want to kick as many males out as possible to move on to the next one because when it comes to ovulation they use something called cryptic female choice where their body actually selects the most favorable sperm to fertilize the eggs so You've got a situation where ball pythons don't want to be around the same ball python for too long. If they mate with it, great, it can go. That's, that's how they work. If it's another female, 
it's just competition for the males. If it's another male, it's just competition for the females. So keeping them together goes against their natural social or antisocial behavior, and that generates stress. Uh, but on top of, like I've said, fighting for dominance. Um, and the third point, which is, is actually a really rare one, is cannibalism. Now, I've never personally seen this in ball pythons, and it's extremely rare, but I have known people have it happen. Um, I've seen photos even of one baby that's eaten another somehow. Um, it's not a big risk, but unless you're breeding, uh, why would you take any risks at all? Um, we're 100% we're responsible for the safety of our pets at all times. So unless it's really necessary for breeding, why, why would you take the risk of any accidents? Um, I just wouldn't personally. Um, and then point number four is spreading disease. And hurricane here is actually another good example of what a disease-ridden bull python can look like, because <laughs> she's 100% healthy. And there are bull pythons that look and act 100% healthy but can carry a viral disease that they've gained resistance to, but other snakes in your collection won't have resistance to. Obviously, you should always quarantine them for a month when they come in, but unless it's for breeding, why risk putting in a snake that possibly carries a type of virus or even protozoa that it has built up resistance to that one of your other snakes might not have resistance to? Uh, and if you don't believe this can happen, look around for some of the stories online of people who have got a new snake and it spread a viral disease to their collection, usually a respiratory infection, and 50 of their snakes have died, but miraculously five have survived. And normally it's not because those five haven't caught it, it's because they have some resistance, either through previous exposure or just naturally. And that, that is how diseases do sometimes spread in animals, it's not always obvious. Uh, number five, which is kind of related, is spreading parasites. Ball pythons, mostly cap in captivity, you occasionally see them with external parasites. It's not as common anymore, but snake mites and ticks are the most common external parasites, which are really easy to spot, and you think, well, that's a really obvious one. But there are parasites, believe it or not, that are quite rare, quite unusual, and hard to spot. And one of them is Pentastomida, which are often called tongue worms, and they're not really worms. They're actually, I think, they're now classified as a type of arthropod, some weird uh, creature, and they will infect the lungs of, of large snakes. And you can not notice them for years on end before they produce any symptoms. And more often than not, you'll never know your snakes have them until you um, get an x-ray for something else. And the veterinarian will notice some dark spots in the lung tissue, which almost looks like, um, you know, tumours. But it's, it's not. It's actually these tongue worms that have inhabited the lungs. So spreading parasites is always a risk. Again, even if your ball python looks like this, even if it looks healthy, there could be something there. So unless it's for breeding, again... Just don't risk it. Uh, number six is, again, on a similar subject, is the risk, increased risk of spontaneous disease. Um, the risk of your snake getting ill because it's forced to be around another snake and it's become stressed and immunosuppressed. So even if there's no virulent contagious disease present, there could be bacteria in the cage that get a foothold on a wound or something, or in your snake's lungs, in the mucous membranes, because it's stressed and the stress has reduced its ability to fight disease. This is exactly the same thing as happens with humans who get stressed, they get down, catch a cold, a flu, whatever, but snakes, it's more likely it's gonna be, I don't know, mouth rot, stomatitis, or a respiratory infection. And you'll think, why on earth did that happen? But it's almost spontaneous. And finally, the last point, last but not least, if you don't want to breed your pythons and you put a male and female together, either on purpose or on accident, uh, you will eventually get eggs. And that is something that can be quite a big deal to deal with if you're not used to breeding, if you don't have, you know, 
seven to ten extra enclosures um, or a rack you know that is something big to deal with and also if your female isn't receptive it's also worth noting that there might not be unwanted eggs but the male will try to breed with her all season long he'll exhaust himself he'll stop eating he may even become ill because he gets so weak and he will annoy her so much that she'll probably stop eating too so that is the main points really these are the main reasons why um, cohabiting your bull pythons is not worth it unless you want to breed them um, so i hope this has been kind of useful information for you but as always please do like and subscribe for more uh, and see more of hurricane here and if there's something i haven't covered or you'd like to add something or another subject you want me to cover please do get in touch and let me know thanks